Good morning. Welcome to worship on this bright sunny morning. It is the sixth Sunday of Epiphany, or after the Epiphany. I want to welcome you all today. A special welcome to those listening on the radio on AM uh, KVBR 1340 and those watching on cable channel 8 or 181. Would you all please rise for confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who stretches out the heavens, who sends light to the nations, who gives breath to us all. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Loving God, we confess that we have turned from your way to follow our own ways. Forgive us for the times we have spoken or acted too quickly. We have not spoken or acted at all. We have hurt those closest to us. We have hurt those we have yet to know. We have thought more about ourselves than others. We have thought less of ourselves than we ought. Turn us around and give us a fresh start so that we can live again as your children. Amen. Even when we have done wrong, God makes us right. Even when we have messed up, God puts us together. God's love never runs out. God never tires of calling us beloved children. Hear God say to you now, your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing as we sing the opening hymn today. Alleluia, Song of Gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen.
Let us pray together. O oh God, the strength of all who hope in you, because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading for today is the psalm, Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. Let us read these verses responsively. Happy are they who, whose way is blameless, who follow the teaching of the Lord. Who never do any wrong, but always walk in your ways. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. I will thank you with a true heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. Please rise. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard it, heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be re reconciled with your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes Yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Special music, TLC Singers.
Thank you, TLC singers. And I want to thank our organist and piano player today for being so versatile and flexible. She came in to practice on Friday, and uh, the organ developed a very severe case of laryngitis and isn't able to sing today. And I did have a temporary fix in mind. I called the organ builder, and he said, you know what, maybe you should just wait till I can get there. I said, that's a really good plan. So thank you, Ellen, for switching over and playing for our service today on the piano, and the organ will be back in online soon. Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Words have power. They have the power to build up, and they have the power to tear down. They have the power to deeply hurt, and they have the power to gently heal and restore. Words that are said, words that are heard, carry tremendous power to affect our lives and how we feel and what we're thinking. I'm not sure who told me this, but at some point in my early years, it may have been my mother, this person said, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Have you ever heard that? I think many a well-intentioned parent, teacher, friend, pastor, perhaps has used those words with someone who has had their feelings deeply hurt by something that was said to them or said about them. And so the, the saying goes, well, it's just words. Uh, sticks and stones, that's what really hurts. But words, you know, you don't have to worry about that. I think as we grow up and mature and begin to experience life as an older person, maybe as an adult, we quickly learn and discover that words have tremendous power to hurt or to build up. Well, what am I talking about today? In this gospel lesson, which is a doozy of a lesson. If you take it at face value, it, it kind of struck us as humorous on Wednesday night. We had 60 people here for worship. And I read this gospel lesson about swearing and adultery and divorce and all these things. And then when the gospel reading is done, I said, this is the good news of the Lord. And we all <laughs> chuckled at that. That is a doozy of a text. But what it's really getting at is the power of the words and the power of the word, which is the word of God and who is Jesus, who is the word. Jesus is the word incarnate. This is at the core of our teaching as Christians. It's really at the core of what we believe as Lutheran Christians. This is what Luther taught, which means this is what St. Paul taught, which means this is what basically the New Testament taught, that there's power in the word. Now, words that we hear and say in this life and in this world, they do have power, but the word of God, who is Jesus, the word of God incarnate, this word comes and has the power to change our lives and transform us into a new way of living. The word... now. If you look at that gospel lesson, I'd encourage you to go, maybe go home and take a, a highlighter because at the beginning of all four of those main sections, it's, Jesus says, you have heard, but I say to you. In other words, this is what the world says about these things. This is what you've heard, but I say to you, and it's something completely different. What these gospel words are getting at today is that there's an ideal that God has set up, maybe the way that God intends us to live. And the word of Jesus comes to us and changes us dramatically so we become the people that he calls us to be. It's a dramatic thing to see that pattern repeat itself four times. You have heard this, but I say to you. You have heard this, but I say to you. The word has tremendous power. And the, most, the, the greatest thing that the word of God does to us 
is that it creates faith and trust in God. This word Jesus is expressed through the Bible, through the reading of the Bible, through the hearing of the word. When we come to church, that's, some, that's why it's so important you know, to preach about um, church attendance. It's a silly thing to do to the people in church because you're here. But the importance of church attendance is that we're putting ourselves in a place where God's word actually can go to work in our lives. That word is expressed in the word that we hear, in the preaching, in the liturgy, in the hymns, the prayers, everything about what we do together here on Sunday morning and Wednesday night gives opportunity for the word to transform our lives and lift us to a new way of living. You know, an example would be the, the words that Jesus says about divorce that seem so harsh. Well, in God's ideal, in a perfect world, there would be no divorce. Jesus is saying, well, what you have said, the world says, if you, if you want a divorce, just go write a certificate. It's no big deal. If your wife burns your toast, get a divorce. If your husband forgets to put the lid down on the toilet, get a divorce. It's nothing to it. And the word comes out and says, no, wait a minute. This is not God's plan for marriage. Same with adultery. God puts a fence around the marriage bed. This is the standard that God sets forth. And so you see, it's, it's about God's word transforming us and changing us. And if you're taking worship notes tonight, that's the main point. That God's word, Jesus, comes to us and changes us and makes us be the people he calls us to be. In theology, we have this rather strange word that we don't use in our worldly language. It's called sanctification. To sanctify means to make holy. And it is a process for the Christian for the rest of our lives. We are being changed and transformed, moving toward holiness and toward the people that God has created us to be. It's a beautiful thing. The power of the word. There are other ways, too, that the word comes to us. Uh, Luther talked a lot about the means of grace. The word is one way. The other way is where, he, where Jesus takes these earthly elements of water and bread and wine and attaches his word to those things. So in a physical way that we can't miss, the power of this word comes to us and transforms our lives again. At second service, we're going to have all three of the means of grace. We're going to have baptism, we're going to have the Lord's Supper, we're going to have the proclamation of the Word. That spirit is just let loose and goes out and gets into the ears of people and makes that mysterious spiritual journey from our ears to our hearts. And faith is born and faith is strengthened and we become different people a new way of living, a new standard, as we move toward that goal of becoming more like Christ. Now I'm going to give you a little warning. Today is, what, the 12th of February. That means that Tuesday is the day that St. Valentine's Day, and he was a real person, by the way. He anonymously sent love notes to people, and it kind of caught on, and we still exchange Valentine's. If you check the paper today, guys, there might be some coupons in there for Wendy's or McDonald's. You could take your sweetie out for a really romantic dinner. You can get a happy meal. But I'd like to suggest to you today that right here and right now, you are being invited to a very special dinner. It's a love meal. And this is so incredible. This is the table right here. And it's romantic and it's all about love because it's a candlelit dinner. Right here, right now. And if we look carefully, I'm looking for chocolates right now. I don't see any, but there is bread and wine. And guess what? 
we have red roses too, thanks, thanks to uh, Joan Burnett, in loving memory of Ray. So we've got a candle at dinner, we're invited to the table, there's bread and there's wine, and the host of this meal is Jesus. And he's serving himself. His own body and his own blood, he serves you and gives it to you. We're not going to be exchanging a diamond ring today, but the scriptures tell us that you are described as a precious jewel. You are a jewel in God's eyes. And if you've ever had this opportunity in life where you're expressing your love to someone, maybe you're proposing, and maybe you have this fear in your life somewhere, what if she says no? What if your love is rejected? At this meal, at this table, your love is never rejected. Jesus says, I have loved you always. From before you were born, I loved you. I tell you I love you every day. My promise for you by virtue of your baptism is that I will love you forever. And I feed you myself strength for the journey. This changes our lives. This meal, this feast, forever changes us and makes us to be the people he calls us to be. The gifts are forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. So let the transformation continue. God bless you today as the word just overwhelms you and changes you and strengthens your faith and gives you a foretaste of the feast to come. Amen. Let us stand and sing the hymn of the day. <clears throat>